All right, so we're doing a quick TLDR before we get into some gameplay with Dredge, just to give you some idea how the deck operates. Basically, this is a graveyard-based deck that tries to flip over the top of its deck, trigger a bunch of different effects, kill your opponent quickly with things like Creeping Chill, um, also getting back things like Prized Amalgam and Silver Smooth Goal, as well as Narcomoebus to beat your opponent down. Um, this deck is both a can be an explosive combo deck, but can also be this kind of resilient mid-range graveyard value-based deck. Um, a lot of times, it, game number one, it tends to overwhelm what the opponent's doing, unless the opponent is doing something inherently broken, something like Belcher or something, or something that just completely ignores with this deck. Sometimes decks like Tron and Amulet can just or, or completely disregard what this deck is doing. post board it comes becomes a lot more of graveyard management, um, whether your opponent has different forms of graveyard hate, whether it be things like Leyline, the Void, and Rest in Peace, or if you're playing against more one-shot things like Relic of Progenitus and Soul Guide Lantern, or are you playing against something like Endurance or um, any creatures of that effect that might affect the graveyard. Um, that really comes with experience with the deck, so I can't cover this all in one short video playing a couple of games, but really, this is a deck that, game number one, Fairly simplistic of what the deck's trying to do. You're trying to find an enabler and a dredger, kind of go nuts from there. Uh, post board games, you're trying to find this balance of playing around what hate cards your opponent's likely to have, boarding in to answer them, and just kind of playing this mid range value game while having this potential of explosive uh, growth or out of value out of your graveyard if your opponent's not answering your early things or if they just don't happen to have the right threats to answer, or right tools to answer it. Um, the key cards, obviously, for the deck, Otherworldly Gaze, Cathartic Reunion, Thrilling Discovery. That's how you get the graveyard thing rolling. Um, you just put cards in the graveyard either from your hand or from the top of your library. Then you try to put a graveyard dr a dredger in the play, whether it be Silver Stinkweed Imp, Golgari Thug, or Dark Blast. Dredge is a replacement effect. If you draw a card, put that many cards on top of your library instead. So if you're a dredge 5, put 5 instead of one drawing a card, etc. And then you play out of your graveyard with things like Ox of Agonis, kind of flashing back, pitching your hand, drawing a bunch or dredging a bunch more cards, triggering creeping chills, bringing your silver smooth goals back, triggering your Nargabimas, bringing your prized amalgams back, beating your opponent down, trying to kill them as quickly as possible. Game one, game two, and game three. Once again, about resource management. Let's get in a couple matches and see how this deck plays. All right, we're back taking a look at a couple of matches I played with Dredge to give you some idea of how the deck operates. Taking a look at opening hands, always important with a deck like Dredge, this is very much an A plus B combo deck. Taking a look at this hand, there are no ways to Dredge quite quickly as we don't have any lands, obviously. Obviously, if we had lands, this hand would be bonkers with either a Thrilling Discovery or Cathartic Reunion, plus another World of Gaze, potentially get the party started. But as this hand has no lands, it's clearly a mulligan. This hand, uh, not exciting. Um, we have a dredger and we have an ox, but no way to pitch anything. And obviously we don't want to draw an Archimiba, so this hand's also a mulligan. Taking a look at this hand. This hand's at least keepable. Um, Gemstone Cavern, not the ideal card, but we are able to put back, say, a Silver Smooth Goal or and a Prized Amalgam or just a Silver Smooth Goal and still have a dredger to pitch to our uh, Cathartic Reunion. So I'm guessing that's what we're going to keep. We'll keep a Silver Smooth Goal in hand and then play our land and pass. Opening, see a mountain in the Goblin Guide. One of Dredge's better matchups. Uh, we have a Dark Blast on top, which means we'll have two Dredgers to pitch here. Um, we pitch a bunch of stuff. Uh, seeing double Creeping Chill, but nothing to get back with it. Um, might have been smart to pitch the Silver Smooth Goal, but we have no guarantee that we would have been able to dredge enough. So. We just basically double Lightning Helix our opponent, buy some time, and pass back to them, see what they do. Opponent goes, Sacred Foundry into Eidolon, hits us with another one. We go ahead and dredge, see a Narcomoeba, get back an Amalgam. Cast a Golgari Thug just to have something to chump block with, get the Amalgam back. Opponent suspends a Rift Bolt, casts a Lava Spike, goes to 10. Opponent swings in. I believe we double block here just to get Goblin Guide off the board. Uh, we go ahead and put an Archimiba back on top. Dredge, get an Archimiba. Get two more Archimiba triggers. A um, Creeping Chill, which would have put our opponent to seven. Two Chump Blockers for their Eidolon. And 
Um, prized Amalgam would have put them to, to four, plus they would have had a spell coming off Suspend. And obviously with us gaining life, they're just out of range. We're just out of range of what Burn is capable of doing, especially with an Eidolon kind of locking themselves out. Sideboarding is always the trickiest part with the Drudge deck, not something that I am particularly proficient at, as this is not a deck that I specialize in. But generally, from what I've seen, you tend to shave around the edges. Burn is a weird one because, as someone who plays a ton of Burn myself, Burn doesn't really play Rest in Peace anymore, um, or any true dedicated Graveyard Heat. Instead, it chooses to play Sanctifier and Vec, which Sanctifier and Vec is a little bit slow for one. Um, it requires specific mana requirements of double white, which was not always the easiest for Burn to manage. And it also... Uh, has protection from most of our removal. Dark Blast doesn't hit it. Uh, Conflagrate doesn't hit it. Um, Lightning Axe doesn't hit it. So we have to board in something like Portable Hole to deal with that specifically. Obviously it has other uses. We can kill other creatures like Goblin Guides with Spear Eidolon. But mainly you're boarding in some amount of Portable Holes for that. Um, also, the Alliance Sanctity, very good in the matchup. But, you know, you can only board in so many cards. So I boarded in Three portable holes, two sanctities, boarded out one otherworldly gaze, one cathartic reunion, one Golgari thug, one silver smoot ghoul, and one dark blast. Just kind of shaved around the edges. You really only need one enabler to get the party started, and if you happen to open with a lane line, the game's almost pretty much over. Taking a look at our opening hand, um, we have quite a bit of drudgers, but no enablers, so we have to pitch this one, unfortunately. Plus, Dougal Noble Mark Amoeba is not where you want to be. This hand's a little bit sketchy, but you do have Leyline. You do have Cathartic Reunion and another Worldly Gaze to dig. So I do think we end up keeping this one, putting back the Mana Confluence, putting the Leyline into play. Our opponent goes turn one GG. Stinkweed Imp, which will be a nice card to pitch. May not, maybe it's possible I should not have fetched there to other Worldly Gaze. But, you know, Eilon coming down. We get to other world of gaze in response, pitching a bunch of cards, including some dredgers that we want to see in the yard, as well as a mark, prized amalgam, creeping chill. We get to do that. Get to cathartic reunion, kind of go nuts here. Well, it does deal us some damage, but we get to really get the graveyard a little bit. Uh, Nice and fat here. Uh, three Narc Amoeba triggers. We're going to get a Silver Smoke Ghoul back, um, which will trigger the Prize Amalgams along with the Narc Amoebas. So we go ahead and get these Narc Amoebas back. Starting to get these Amalgams back on the end step. Just kind of go nuts from there. Let all these triggers go off. Get this absurd board on turn two. And from here, really, there's nothing Burn can do. And this is one of the strengths of this deck, is it does have this just kind of nut draw potential where your opponent just can't come back from it. I mean, really, on turn two, we had 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 power in play. Uh, we'd gained some life, and, you know, it's just really hard for a deck like Burn to come back from that. Um, a lot of decks, just if they don't have, like, an, an immediate endurance or an immediate... Um, answer to all this nonsense it's just not possible and this is this is the power of dredge um you know our opponent could easily pass sanctifier and back and kind of derailed all this but alas they didn't so we just kind of got to do our thing and if you don't uh respect dredge with enough graveyard heat or have the proper tools to answer it the deck hat is capable of still some incredible draws all right now we get to look at a match that's a little bit different or on the play, which is obviously always nice. This hand obviously has Cathartic Reunion, a couple of Dredgers, Ox. More cards than we could, would want to pitch, or than we can pitch with Cathartic. Creeping Chill is not always great to have in hand, but at least we have some Dredgers. Play City of Brass and Pass. When it plays Heathen Crab. So we're up against the Mill. Um, I'm not sure here if the correct thing is to go as aggressive as we do this game um, we go ahead and dredge a bunch fortunately don't really hit anything to trigger and bring back the prized amalgams so we pass to our opponent 
One plays a crab, mills a sum, mills a s'more. We still aren't getting anything back. Unfortunately, we're playing right into our opponent's game plan. Probably should have cast one of these creatures here. Not that's going to make a huge difference if our opponent has any type of reasonable draw. Um, they go ahead and, and mill us some more. Uh, Tasha's Hideous Laughter, get rid of a bunch of cards. And from here, we're just in pretty much we can't win mode. Get some amalgams back. If our opponent has any way to mill us, we're just dead. So I scoop it up because they have seven cards in hand. And at minimum, they can mill us for three with Field of Ruin. Uh, potentially hit us with an archive trap from there so just figured it was best to give up the game as we didn't hit anything off that first big mill and we really didn't put any pressure on them and they're just going to be able to kill us before one of the downsides of having a deck that mills is when you're running up to the mill deck you're running into some problems and typically uh, mill has a know it's weak knows it's weak against graveyard decks so typically there's a ton of hate post board but we'll see what our opponent's packing in the post-board game. All right, taking a look at the post, first of the post-board games, if we manage to win this one. Uh, the strategy is a little bit different this time around. Uh, Ley Line Sanctity is really about the only card we want. Uh, Mill typically doesn't have any permanent base graveyard hate. Uh, it might have sometimes some Soul Guide Lanterns and stuff. Most of the time, it was relying on things like Extra Pate, Cryptid Incursion and Surgical Extraction. So it really doesn't make a ton of sense to bring in a ton of permanent base tape and dilute our deck. So instead, we're just shaving around the edges, a Creeping Chill, a Dark Blast, a Dark Blast, and a Thrilling Discovery to be able to bring in our copies of Leyline Sanctity. Now Leyline Sanctity doesn't stop all of their mill cards, but it does stop a good bit of them. Um, and I do believe it also stops Crypt Incursion. Um, let me double check on that as Crypt Incursion is not a card you tend to see a lot of. But I believe it says target players. Excel all creatures from target players' graveyard. So, it takes away one of their bigger life gain buffs. Yes, we're on the play. First hand was just trash. This hand, a little bit dangerous, but we do have a Dark Blast. We do have a Ley Line of Sanctity. And our opponent does tend to mill us for it, so I do believe I end up keeping this hand. Or go, I guess I do not. This hand, decent. We have an Amalgam, a Drudger, and a Silver Smoot. Probably put back, I would guess, Conflagrate and Silver Smoot. And that is indeed what I put back. We pass the turn. Opponent does the crab thing. We go ahead and Thrilling Discovery, get to mill a little bit, do that, get back the Silver Smoot, which will trigger the Amalgams if our opponent doesn't have a way to remove them. Well, it's milling us. We untap with, I believe, 10 power here. Milling Dark Blast, maybe not the best thing, maybe I'm just supposed to Kind of let the opponent's thing do its thing. We cast Stinkweed Dim just to have a little bit more pressure on the battlefield. Our opponent goes and Fields of Ruins us. They mill us. Archive Trap. Archive Trap. Double Creeping Chill. Good game. So our opponent milled us for a bunch. Since we had gotten so much early pressure on the board, we were able to kind of put them in range of the Creeping Chills left in our deck. Probably shouldn't have boarded out the creeping chill that I did. So, but at least we put enough pressure on them. Turn two, you know, once again, very power, the big power of this deck. Turn two, turn three, having 10 power in play. So when Dredge does Dredge things, it's still an insanely powerful deck. As far as sideboarding, I did make a minor adjustment. Um, I boarded in the gemstone mine and some of the other cards that we boarded out and only left the two dark blasts in the sideboard. And still left all of our lane line of sanctities in play. So all I have currently out is the two Dark Blasts uh, for boarding in, what, five cards, the four ley lines on the one Gemstone Cavern. A lot being as you're up against Mill. So this hand just doesn't do a whole lot. It has a lot of setup, but no real payoff right now. So I think we won't look in this hand, although you could argue potentially keeping this one. This one's sketchy. Thrilling Discovery can't be cast. Um, 
I don't think I realize that when I, well, I believe I ultimately choose to keep this hand that I can't cast the Wing Discovery. But, you know, if this were a Cathartic Rune or this were one of our Rainbow Lands, this hand would be perfectly keepable. I believe I put back a Silver Smoot and opponent plays Field of Ruin. We get bailed out by our deck immediately. Opponent plays another Field of Ruin as a Miracorb, which is a little bit more of a controlled mill. Um, we get to pitch Amalgam and Thug, get a Narc Amoeba, get a Prized Amalgam back. Opponent is even boards in Unmoored Ego, which I find interesting. We mill over some cards, including a Creeping Shell. A little Stinky. Hit them for four. Put them to 12. We cast a Silver Smoot. Get back another Silver Smoot, I believe. Nope, never mind. Opponent exiles our thing. We dredge when we probably shouldn't have. Deal our opponent four. Cast a Golgari Thug just to have more pressure on the battlefield. Our opponent chooses to extirpate here, but they chose to extirpate our Amalgams. Now, don't get me wrong, Amalgam is a very threatening card, but I really think when you're this low of life total and you can't deal with your opponent's board presence, that a card like Creeping Chill might be more important. And ironically, we draw one. Um, Whenever you're up against mill, because especially with this Mesmeric Orb in play, you really kind of have to control your how much you're milling. And then I also have this Conflagrate tucked away. So we had multiple ways to win this game this turn. But, you know, just go ahead and attack. Do the thing. And then Creeping Chill. <clears throat> so, you know, one of the things when you're up against a deck like mill... You can't necessarily go nuts like we did in game one. You have to be a little bit more controlled with what you're doing. You have to exercise a very similar game strategy against Great Yard Hate in the post war games. You can't always go completely bonkers trying to put like 30, 20 or 30 cards in your graveyard in the first couple turns with like Ox and stuff. Um, I think that's really something you learn as you play more and more of Dredge is when to go for complete broke, when to be a little bit more of a controlled, kind of a mid rangey attrition plan. Um, forcing your opponent to expend their graveyard hate cards like five or ten cards at a time. You know, say when you're presenting like an amalgam and a silver smoot and a uh, creeping chill, maybe they have to exile your graveyard and that still leaves most of your deck relatively intact. But um, this is certainly a deck that rewards some experience with a deck, especially in the post board games, much like a deck like Living End. Um, the trick isn't really game one, the trick is more the post board games when you're playing against various forms of hate, whether how to play around Endurance, how to play Leyline in the Void, how to play around um, Rest in Peace, how to play around Sanctifier and Vec, all these different like cards that have different texts that can attack what your game plan is doing. Sometimes you just have to go to plan like Triple Z of cast hard casting the Dum Dums. Um, you know, not, the, not the best game plan, but say your opponent's mulligan to like two or three, trying to find a ley line. You know, sometimes hard casting prize amalgam and silver smoot goal will just get their beat down wise before they can actually do anything. So, you know, a lot you can learn from the dredge deck. Um, it's not a deck that's very high on my proficiency list, but it is a deck that I have played some. I've played against it quite a bit, especially when it used to be in its heyday before the banning of faithless looting. Um, it was a deck that I always hated to play against with Burn. Um, and deck can certainly give decks like Murktide some issues as well. So, deck you should be aware of. You got to see some of the explosive power of the deck, playing around some graveyard hate, playing around some different strategies, whether it be Burn or Mill. Um, obviously, we could go a lot more in depth with these kind of videos um, if it's something people end up liking. You know, deeper breakdowns of meta decks that people aren't really playing much. But, like I said, there are experts out there like Sodek that you can check out. Um, I believe most of his content, unfortunately, is behind a paywall. But, you know, if you want to master a deck, sometimes you have to pay the price of experience, so to speak. But, as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe in the videos. Don't forget to check us out, our next deck guide and deck gameplay next week.